What is going on guys? It is Mike from Poketips Official and today we're going to be doing something very exciting. So this channel just hit 30,000 subscribers and I want to say thank you so much for subscribing. I really do appreciate it. I'm glad you guys are enjoying the content that I'm putting out there and I thought a great way to celebrate this would to be to go back to one of the games that got me really, really into Pokemon. My copy of Pokemon Diamond. At this point, I've had this copy lying around for about 11 years. I got it back in 2007, I believe a week after it first came out, so it's going to be really fun jumping back into my old Diamond save file. I'm going to be really excited to see what I have in there because I have not touched this copy of Pokemon Diamond in years and years and years. Now I'm not sure what we're going to find in there. I know when the newer Pokemon games at the time were coming out like black and white, I was migrating all my Pokemon out of these copies of Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum into the newer games, but I'm sure I still have some exciting stuff lying around, so it will be really fun to go and check and see what we have in here and just have a nice little look at the Sinnoh region again after all this time. Sinnoh games were some of my favorites because there's so much nostalgia in this region for me. There's so many stories I could tell about this and we're just gonna have a great time jumping through my old copy of Pokemon Diamond. So let's jump right into it, Pokemon Diamond version. So as you can see, I spent a lot of time playing my copy of Pokemon Diamond. 390 hours was no joke. That complete Pokedex, I believe I did that pretty much legitimately. I might have used a copy of like Pokemon Pearl to hack in rare candies, but this copy I remember I wanted to be super legitimate on. So that Pokedex, I put a lot of time and effort into actually completing. I remember I went to uh, a lot of the Pokemon events. I went to the GameStop events, the ones at Toys R Us. I even, I live in New York, so I went to like the Nintendo World, or was it the Pokemon Center back then? I believe it was Nintendo World even back then. They changed that a long time ago. But I went to a lot of Pokemon events, met a lot of people, battled so many people with this copy, so I just have so many memories. Let's jump right into it without any further ado. And you can see... July 5th. I don't know what year that was. I feel like on the journal system, they should have put the years on there as well, because you could go back and you can't really tell what year it was. March 21st, March 19th, February 4th. Oof, I played it on Valentine's Day. I guess I was feeling lonely that year. Oh, listen to that Sinnoh music. Oh, I have not heard this track in such a long time. We are home. We are home back in the Sinnoh region. Ah, the Poketch at the bottom of the screen. It shows you the obtained Pokemon. We had that one Pokemon. Oh, this one doesn't have the back button, though. That was one of the great enhancements that I was super excited about Pokemon Platinum with. They made a big error with this first game, and they didn't put the uh, back button. They didn't put a way to go back on the Poketch in. So let's go ahead and check out that party. Who do I have in my team? A level 100 Salamence. A level 100 Meowth. Why did I have that? Let's go ahead and check this bad boy out. It came from the Hoenn region. I guess it came from my copy of Pokemon Emerald. That was another game I played a lot. And look at that Met date, 2007. So much has changed since 2007. I was such a tiny little guy. Now I'm all grown up. It's just like, wow, this is my childhood right here. Now Meowth and the Master Ball from the Hoenn region, I don't really remember what I was doing here. Level 100, so I probably, you know what I probably did to get this at level 100? I probably used the uh, Emerald cloning glitch where you could go to the Battle Frontier, I believe it was. I don't remember how to do this anymore because it's been such a long time. But Pokemon Emerald had a very easy to do cloning glitch. So I probably just cloned a bunch of rare candies and leveled this thing up because I don't think I would train a Meowth to level 100. Now why it's in a Master Ball, I have absolutely no idea. Oh, I might have been using this to like get pickup items. That was probably it. Because I remember at the higher levels, you would get better pickup items. That's probably what I was doing and it has payday. So I was probably using this like to get a bunch of money and cool items. And Entei, level 30 Entei. 2011, whoa, that's a big difference between like the 2008, 2007. I think this was from an event from uh, for black and white, I think. I think you could transfer this one over to black and white, and you'd be able to run into, I uh, believe, uh, Zorark in the wild. Yeah, with this game, I went to a lot of events. Oh, I can't get into this door. Oh, there we go. I really want to check and see if I have any event Pokemon left lying around. I do not know. So my Pokemon team box is empty. All these boxes look empty. Ooh, ooh, what, what's this? What's this over here? So we have a Jirachi level five with the Lychee Berry. From GameStop. Oh, I remember this. I remember this. We have Arceus, the Toys R Us Arceus. I think this one, if you brought it over to Heart Gold and Soul Silver, it would unlock that whole event where you'd be able to go to the uh, Sinjo Ruins and get yourself a special level one legendary Pokemon. So that's kind of cool. 
met in 2011. We have Judgment, Roar of Time, Spatial Rend, and Shadow Force. So yeah, that's probably what the event was for because it knows all of the exclusive moves of those legendary Pokemon. So we had a Shaman over here. This one, I think, lets you get the uh, Gracedia Flower in Pokemon Platinum. It's kind of cool how all these little Pokemon that you would go to the store and get, they would unlock something in a different Pokemon game. I think, once again, these were for black and white. It's kind of cool. Very, very cool. Extra. This box was full of my extra Pokemon, I guess. Ooh, level 100 Starmie. I think I used this a whole bunch back in the day. So yeah, not really sure why Starmie had a Choice Scarf. I think this thing is pretty fast. 317 speed is not bad at all. Porygon Z from the Kanto region, so this must have been from my copy of Leaf Green. Leaf Green was one of those games that I played a lot too. I think I might have even, even had more hours in my Leaf Green than this Diamond copy. But let's see what else I have over here. Level 100 Alakazam, Golem level 32, Kangaskhan, my Japanese Charmeleon, kind of cool. And this Rayquaza at the bottom, the, just the icon looks so strange to me. Although one thing I do like is all the Pokemon, like I mentioned in a different video, they just have more like bright and vibrant colors in these older games. Let's go check out the next box. Rare 2. I guess I thought Mudkip was pretty rare. I could see it being rare, you know? You had to breed it and transfer it from a different game. Japanese Manaphy level 1? That's kind of cool. Oh yes, the Manaphy's in these games. You actually had to play through Pokemon Ranger. I actually went out and bought a whole copy of Pokemon Ranger just to get Manaphy, and I'm actually, I don't regret that. Pokemon Ranger was a very, very fun game. That was a kind of a cool way to do an event. Ah, uh, and this box over here for Plat, so that must have been Pokemon that I wanted to transfer over to Platinum once Platinum came out. So even back then, I was just as excited for the new Pokemon games like I am now. So something kind of interesting is back Back in like 2007, 2008 with these older Pokemon games, Nintendo would actually release the Japanese version of the games six months in advance before the English version of the games. Now I was always a huge Pokemon fan, so there was no way in the world that I could go ahead and wait that long to get the game. So what I would do is actually go on eBay and buy the Japanese copies of the Pokemon games. I did that with Platinum, and I did that with I believe Soul Silver as well. And I would play through the whole games and just play them in Japanese, couldn't speak a word of Japanese, I still can't read or speak Japanese, but I would play through the games because they were similar enough to the other games where I could kind of just like get through them without any issues. But it was so much fun, I remember bringing those games over to like parties and everything, and I would have the new version of the Pokemon game. I remember actually one of my friends had a birthday party and everybody was playing Diamond or Pearl, and on my screen I was the only one with like the blue trainer from Platinum wearing like the blue hat and everything, I felt so cool. But yeah, these Pokemon look pretty legit, a level 50 Garchomp with a Chestoberry, I'm not sure what set that one. Oh, these might have been for double battles, actually, because I remember I still love this combo of Garchomp and Zapdos, because one of them you could use Earthquake on, and the other one you could use Discharge. Yep, that's what I was doing. Oh, I still think the same way. Way back then, I used to play Pokemon Battle Revolution a lot and do the double battles online, and that combo of Discharge and Earthquake, because both of the other Pokemon are immune to them, you could just hit both of the other Pokemon on the other side of the field, and it was just so, so good. And here is one of those Event Dark Rise, level 50, very, very cool, and timid nature. I must have soft reset for this thing a while. The Alamos Dark Eye. I remember this thing. This was from the Pokemon movie way back when. I remember in Japan it was called Dialga versus Palkia versus Dark cry and I was so hyped about this movie. Ooh, and a shiny Metang. I'm not sure if this was something that I obtained. I don't remember getting it. Yeah, Shu. So I must have got it from somebody named Shu. Well, thank you, Shu, for the shiny Metang. Shiny Metang looks so cool. Shiny Metagross is even cooler. So I don't know why I never evolved this thing. Oh, I just found the coolest thing down here. So I actually have a unhatched Manaphy egg all the way. It's just been sitting here for years, since 2009. Maybe one of these days, I'll go ahead and actually hatch this Manaphy egg. That is very, very cool though. I don't know if I got this from a Pokemon Ranger game that I have, or I traded for somebody for it, but uh, I love the special design that this Manaphy egg has. I wish they would do an event like this again, where you could play a Pokemon Ranger game and just transfer the Manaphy eggs over to the new games. That was just such a fun event. I have another Manaphy over here, level 100. This is the one I got from my first copy of Pokemon Ranger because I remember I trained this bad boy all the way up to level 100. He used to be one of my favorite Pokemon. 
And it's not a terrible moveset, you know? Ice Beam, Energy Ball, Surf for coverage and stab moves. I guess Aqua Ring for that recovery. Regice with the nickname Ice King because, you know, I guess I was thought it was the king of the ice, the Regice. So this must have been again from my copy of Pokemon Emeralds. And of course, we have Dialga, the cover legendary of this Pokemon game. Once again, traded all the way up to level 100. Training in this game wasn't that bad because we had the VS Seeker. So you could just go ahead and rematch trainers over and over again. I remember I would go to the fight area and there would be this one trainer, I think with like three Pidgeotos or something. And I would just rematch that guy over and over again. So you'll notice a lot of my Pokemon that I didn't intentionally EV train will have a lot of speed EVs just because that was my favorite way to train my Pokemon up. And is this the special event Pichu over here? Yes, it is! So this Pichu over here, if you transferred it over to Heart Gold or Soul Silver, it would let you get the spiky eared or notched eared Pichu, which I again I wish you could transfer those things over to the newer games, but it, they're just stuck in Generation 4. Moon Man with the N's capitalized and the M capitalized. Oh boy. Ah, uh, Electivire, still one of my favorite Pokemon to this day. The PK Topia one event too. So this one you had to transfer over from Pokemon Battle Revolution. And it was kind of nice because I believe it came with I Ice Punch and Fire Punch, two moves that you couldn't really get because there were no move tutors back in Diamond and Pearl. You had to wait until Platinum came out for those move tutors, or you had to go back, and this is what I did with my first Electivire, you had to get it back in, I believe, Emerald, because Emerald was the last game that also had those punches as move tutor moves. And it looks like over here, I was trying to do a Living Dex. I don't think I actually completed a Living Pokedex in this Pokemon game. I think I did that. The first time I completed a Living Pokedex was in Pokemon Black or Pokemon White, I think. But it, you can see, it looks like I tried. And I guess when I got to here, I don't really know what happened. Everything was a little bit of a mess. And I guess this box is full of rare Pokemon. Let's see what we have over here. This is not a legitimate Charizard. I don't know how I got this one because I never used the name Philip. This wasn't from one of my copies. I guess somebody traded it over to me. But yeah, caught in a Master Ball, met at Victory Road at level 45. That is not a legitimate Charizard, but still very, very cool to see just a shiny Charizard. All right, so those are my boxes and there's something else I really want to go ahead and check out. So let's go fly and I'm glad my Salamence knows fly over to, I believe it was in Turna City, where I used to go on the underground a whole bunch. You can see I don't really remember the map that well. I feel so bad because I spent so much time playing these games back in the day, and now going back to it, it's just like, where is anything? But I remember you got the underground exploration kit in Interna City. I remember this used to be my favorite spot to go underground. Underground is a feature I really wish they would bring back. Wow, I even had it set to my Y button. That's how much I used to go down here. But I used to go underground all the time and play with my friends. I would bring my DS to school and we would all just meet up together. And we'd all set up really cool secret bases. So I want to see if I could go ahead and find my secret vase. Ah, uh, here we are in the Sinnoh Underground. I really, really hope that if they ever remake Diamond and Pearl, they bring this back and make it so you could do this over Wi-Fi connection. So we're gonna go find that secret base. I love the underground music. Something I noticed is the underground music here is kind of like the desert music from the uh, Hoenn region games. So this is my little hole in the wall. Oh, I can't move. I can't move at all. I'm so bad at navigating. Let's go inside and check out this secret base. Let's leave the door open. I don't really want to change anything around. Ooh, I had the GTS globe over here. I had the little gym statue. Look at that Snorlax plushie. Oh, I love this thing. And I guess if I wanted to bring some friends over, we could all sit over here and play the Wii. Oh, and talking to this gym statue, it lets you know the amount of secret base flags that you've obtained. I remember this was a big battle. We would get into fights over these things. You, you'd you have your friends over at your secret base, and you'd be like playing around, doing stuff in your secret base, but as soon as one of your friends went out and stole your flag, oh, that's where it was, it was over. And I think you could set traps in this too. Yes, yes you can. Let's go ahead and just set some down just for fun. I remember I have some traps set somewhere underground, but I'm not sure where they are. They might be around my friend's secret bases, wherever those used to be. I feel like, I don't, I'm surprised, I thought I set a lot more traps around my own secret base, I guess they all sprung them. Wow, that thing flings you far. Oh, here's some traps that I set, what do these things do? This doesn't look like the greatest little layout over here, could you just place five traps in a row? I think there was a limit on how many traps you could place. Let's go ahead, let's do an alert trap, let's bury this one over here. Or maybe somebody just sprung it. I actually kind of want to mess around with these, what does this one do? All right, move trap, confuse trap. Oh, so that reverses your movement, I think. 
What? I don't even think this is reversing my movie. It's just putting me in random directions. This is very confusing. This is a good trap. Oh, that was weird. Let's try this one over here. That was the alert trap that I just set down. It's an alert from Michael. Goodbye, I'm going back up. Well, that wasn't really trap-like. Is this another one of those confusing traps? Yes, it is. This is so weird. I'm literally just holding the screen in one direction, and it's just making me go in all these random ways. I think it would be kind of cool to set that confused trap down with some other traps as well. Oop, and over here, I found something. This is some There's something sparkling in the ground, so let's go ahead and talk to that. Let's talk to that. I can't move in this game at all. Red Sphere, size 99, grew by 87 sizes since it's been buried. Well, I guess that's what happened once you're buried for like 10 years. And something pinged in the wall, two confirmed. Let's go ahead and play this minigame, I have not touched this in years. Oop, that looks like a fossil. What fossil is that? Oh, this is so fun. Can we find the other one without breaking the wall? Oh, there's something over here. Is that an item or is that a rock? Nope, that's a rock. Oh. It's been a while since I've touched this. Ow. Where are the other items? That's another rock. Maybe it's... Uh, I guess we lost it. Well, we got something. Ooh, we got the Helix Fossil. All bow down to Lord Helix. You know, looking at this stuff just brings back so many memories. All the time that I spent playing these games, I would get into trouble because I would bring my DS to school sometimes when we played at lunch. And this was back when they said... The teacher said, no, you can't have phones, you can't have DS's, you can't have Game Boys or anything. You couldn't bring anything. If you were caught, they would take it away for the whole day. But that wouldn't stop us, you know. But it's just interesting, looking back on all this, thinking about all the memories, and just thinking about where all the people that I used to play this game with are in life now. Everybody's out in college, we're all grown up now. But Pokemon Diamond and Pearl are going to be here forever. It's just a little, I guess, mirror or a view back into what life used to be like. So it was so simple back then. I could just stay at home, play Pokemon, but now you have to go out and get a job, do something with your life. Oh, I miss the old days. Well, that was fun, but it's time to go back up. And I'd say the one last thing that I really want to do before I leave this game, I cannot leave this egg here any longer. I have to go ahead and take it and hatch it. It's been sitting there waiting for years. So let's go ahead and hatch this bad boy. Alright, so this egg is getting pretty close to hatching, and just running up and down this route is reminding me why I liked breeding in these games so much. Because, compared to Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, not bad games for breeding, but it's just not optimal. I like just being able to go up and down on one route without doing anything fancy, not seeing any loading screens or transition screens. With Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, yes, it's pretty fast, but you have to do that Tauros method where you just spin around in a circle, or you have to fly somewhere else, or you could just run up and down on that route, but you have to waste precious time because the game takes some time to load a new area. With this, you just keep going up and down and up and down, and eventually, your egg's gonna hatch. Oh! Alright, it's that time. Let's go ahead and hatch this Pokemon egg. I feel so, so bad for leaving you there for maybe nine years. I'm so glad to finally see you out of that egg. Welcome to the world of Pokemon, Pineco. Now that next egg though, that's gonna sit there for another nine years because I'm not going through this whole hatching thing again. Now I know I said this is gonna be the last thing I do in my copy Pokemon Diamond, but I actually wanna do a few more things. Just running up and down like that reminded me of a few cool glitches that I really wanna try. So I wanna try tweaking, and there's another glitch that I wanna try over here that cuts the music out. I remember this one I discovered by myself, and tweaking I found out online. But there's this area down, I believe, south of Veilstone City. And hopefully I can do this again because it's been such a long, long time. And it's the area where you go and catch Giratina in these games. And if you run with your bike really, really quickly in and out of the area, when you go in the area again, it will just play no music at all. I, again, I haven't done this in years, so I really want to go ahead and see if I can get this. So I'm not sure exactly how to do this. I feel like if you just go in really, really quickly... While the music for the other route is still playing, the music for this does not load. Let's see if I can go ahead and do this. It's been a while. Maybe I'm just going crazy. Alright, so I had a little trouble recreating that. I guess I was better at Pokemon way back in the day. But I did a little Googling, and I found a method that's actually even easier. So I want to go ahead and test that out and see if I can get that to work. So apparently, all you have to do now is just walk down, go to the right over here, enter Spring Path, then go in your bag, take a look at your TMs and HMs and just walk through them, maybe interact with them a little bit, and then go back on Route 214, and the music should be gone. So let's go ahead and see. And... Oh my gosh, it is completely quiet out here! 
and you can see I don't have the music off or anything because I'm still making the thud sound when you walk around. This is so crazy. I had no idea it was that easy. I was doing a whole bit, bunch of like fancy bike tricks. I know you can do it with the bike too, but that seems so easy. And you could talk to these guys. And see, just no music at all. That is so weird. These games had some very interesting glitches. Now, while we're on the topic of glitches, another glitch that I used to love doing was the tweaking glitch in Jubilife City. Now, I know these four tiles over here, if you like spin around in a certain way and do it really, really quickly, it'll cause all sorts of loading bugs and issues with Jubilife City, and somehow you could walk through walls and stuff. Now, I was never that good at it, but I feel like that would be a fun way to end this adventure into my 11-year-old diamond save file. So let's see if we could get something. Well, I tried something and it looks like I broke my game. So, guys, that was my adventure into my copy of my Pokemon Diamond save file. It's not actually broken, I think I just have to reset the game and it'll be fine. But it was a lot of fun taking a look back into the older Pokemon games, seeing where I really spent my childhood. I spent so much time playing this game, looking up information about it, and it's just great to go and relive that adventure. So I want to thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you do, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more amazing Pokemon content coming soon to you. Also, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you get notified every single time I upload a video. Alright, so once again, thanks for watching, and I hope you guys have a fantastic day.